Hey boys and girls, welcome to week nine of the big Bible adventure. Oh, you wanna know what this is? I'll get to that in just a second. But I just want us to remember what we're doing here. We're studying what book? That's right, the Bible, which is one great big story that points us to who? To Jesus, that's right. Last half term, we studied all those great stories that pointed us forward in the Old Testament to Jesus. And so far this term, we've had two fantastic stories. We've had the first one where we found a manger and we learned that the king has come. But he wasn't what we expected. I mean, being born in a manger and all that. And then last week, we found that the king had drunk the cup, the cup that we deserve, so that the snake would be crushed. But amazing. But we also learned that Jesus died, and there was a promise of some good news this week. So I can't wait to get started. Oh, what's that? Oh, you want to know about the car? Is this awesome? I mean, look at this racing car. Look, because he's got a horn. Do you know what it's for? It's for Pete's birthday. Yep, it's Pete's birthday today. And I spent a ton of money buying him this awesome car. He's gonna be so excited. Oh, wait, I see him coming. Let me hide it, let me hide it. It's hey, my Pete. It's my birthday. Pete. It's my birthday. It's my birthday. It's Woo. my birthday. Happy it's my birthday. birthday it's my birthday. To you. Happy birthday Ooh. to me. I'm not gonna ask how old you are. Oh, yeah, don't, don't ask me, boys and girls. Okay, no. yeah, yeah. But it's his birthday, and that's so birthday. exciting! Yes! I have bought you the most awesome present. You are going to love it! Oh, that's so good! I'm, I'm so excited to find out what this present is. Can you, can, can you tell me? Not just yet. Oh, I, please, Mary, please look. I, you don't have to show me, don't have to do anything. I just, I just want to know what it is. No, no, you have to wait. You have to wait. You just have to trust that I have bought you a present. I don't know if I can wait that long, please. No, no, you are just going to have to trust that I bought it for you. You just gotta believe that I bought it for you. Okay, uh... You, you don't believe me, do you? I don't even know. David, you're filming us. You saw me. I had it, didn't I? See? See? David might, might say yeah, but I still don't believe you. Listen, I'm going to have to convince you, aren't I? Yeah, you got to convince it somehow. I mean, I, I'm excited, but I, I just need convincing. Well, let's talk about it while the kids go and sing this song. What's the song about? It's all about the New Testament books of the Bible. Matthew and Mark. Luke and John. Oh, yeah, sing it. Learn them. Really good for you. Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, and now it's 1st Timothy, then it's 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, and Hebrews, James, and now it's 1st Peter, and then it's 2nd Peter, 1st John, 2nd John, 3rd John, Jude, Corinthians, Galatians, and Ephesians, Philippians, Colossians, 1st and 2nd Thessalonians, and now it's 1st Timothy, then it's 2nd Timothy, Titus, and Philemon, and Hebrews, James, and now it's 1st Peter, 
And then a second beater First shot, second shot, third shot, shoot These are the books of the Bible The wonderful books of the Bible I do love that song. It really is helping me learn yes. the books of the Bible. I mean, I think I got the Old Testament last time, yep, um, yep. but now I'm really getting new. Yeah, excellent. So, still excited about your present? Yeah, I am, but I still don't believe you. All that convincing that I did during the song, you still don't believe me? Yeah. Well, shall I show you some more evidence? Come on then, yeah. yeah. I have got the receipt! See. Look! Look! It doesn't say what it is. Oh, it doesn't say what it is. But you can see I bought something. You did buy something. It looked expensive. It does. But that could be anything. Maybe. Gosh, be all my pocket money. Maybe you bought yourself something really nice and not nope. for me. No, nope. there's evidence there. There's evidence. No, but look, I still don't quite believe you. Listen, um, I think we need to get started on the adventure. Because the kids, I know they're excited about your birthday and your present. But we're really here to learn about yeah, the Bible. So and that, that's more important. It is, it is. Yeah. So why don't we head in? Because I've heard the object is inside today. Should we go inside? Yeah, let's, let's go. go. Let's go. Let's see. Do you know where we're going inside? Oh, well, I think we've got to go straight ahead. <laughs> All right, the treasure map says five steps forward. Okay, one, two, three, four, five. Okay. Now, two to your right. Two to your right. Two forwards. Two forwards. One, two. Try not to bang. Yeah, you're okay. Fine. Yeah. Good, yeah. good. Yeah, uh, that. All right. Now shuffle to the left one half step. Excellent. Okay. Now forward four more steps. One, two, three, four. Do you see anything? There's nothing, nothing here. All right. Uh, oh, there's one more thing. Two more steps forward. One, two. Oh! Oh! oh. What what's, is what's that? What's that? That's a great big stone that needs to be rolled away. Yeah, it's a, it the, looks like a tomb with a stone. The, I know you're, you're, it's your birthday, but you're big and strong. Do you think you could roll it away? I know what, I'm, I'm a big boy now because it's my birthday, so I can roll it away. That's... What is it? It's, it's empty. It's empty? There's nothing it's, in there. It's... Ooh. It's kind of like a tomb in there. It's dark and gloomy and... But, oh, there's... Look at that! There's a CD! There's a CD! Do you think that's going to explain it for us? I think it will. I All think right. it will. Let me get... The CD. The reader! Yeah. And hopefully someone will explain to us this empty tomb! What's up with that? Here we go! John, chapter 20, starting from verse 1. Early on the first day of the week, while it was still dark, Mary Magdalene went to the tomb and saw the stone had been removed from the entrance. So she came running to Simon Peter and the other disciple, the one Jesus loved, and said, They have taken the Lord out of the tomb and we don't know where they have put him. So Peter and the other disciple started for the tomb. Both were running, but the other disciples outran Peter and reached the tomb first. He bent over and looked in at the strips of linen lying there, but did not go in. Then Simon Peter came along behind him and went straight into the tomb. He saw the strips of linen lying there, as well as the cloth that had been wrapped around Jesus' head. The cloth was still lying in its place, separate from the linen. Finally, the other disciples who had reached the tomb first also went inside. He saw and believed. They still did not understand from scripture that Jesus had to rise from the dead. Then the disciples went back where they were staying. Uh, now we're going to skip verses 11 to 18 and go from verse 19. So, John chapter 20, verse 19. On the evening of the first of the week, when the disciples were together with the doors locked for fear of Jewish leaders, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. After he said this, he showed them his hands and his sides. The disciples were overjoyed when they saw the Lord. Again, Jesus said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, 
I am sending you. And with that, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive anyone's sins, their sins are forgiven. If you do not forgive them, they are not forgiven. Now Thomas, also known as Didymus, one of the twelve, was not with the disciples when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, We have seen the Lord. But he said to them, Unless I see the nail marks in his hands, and put my fingers where the nails were, and put my hand into his side, I will not believe. A week later, his disciples were in the house again, and Thomas was with them. Though the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them, and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your fingers here. See my hands. Reach out your hand and put them into my side. Stop doubting and believe. Thomas said to him, My Lord and my God. Then Jesus told him, Because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet believed. Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe and that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. Hi everyone, and welcome to the next part of our Big Bible Adventure. So I've got a question for you this morning. If I were to tell you that tomorrow I'm going to go to the moon, would you believe me? No? It does sound a little bit unlikely, doesn't it? I reckon if I told you that, you'd think I was making it up. And you'd probably want to at least see some proof before you'd believe me. A big claim like that, claim that I'm going to go to the moon, I'm going to need something impressive to convince you. So maybe if I send a picture for next week's Big Bible Adventure, showing me making the craft on the moon, maybe that would be enough. Or if your friend at school this week says, it's really true, I saw it on the TV. Or you saw a paper saying, Enfield man Tom Kappelman goes into space. Maybe then you believe me. But until you see something like that, you're not going to believe I can do that. You're not going to believe I'm going to go to the moon. Well, you'd be right not to believe me. I've got no way of going to the moon, so I wouldn't be able to show you any of those things. I would have no way of proving that I could do what I said. Well, this term we've been hearing about another big claim, one that God made. He said he was going to send a king who was going to be the serpent crusher who was going to deal with the problem of our sins. And we learnt about some kings, like David and Solomon, but they all messed up. They all sinned themselves. So they couldn't be the ones to deal with our sins. They couldn't even deal with their own. God's people had to keep waiting for God's promised king. But then we learned about Jesus, who did loads of amazing things. And he taught the people wonderful things about God. And he never sinned. It looked like God was finally keeping his promise. But then last week we learned that Jesus died. Sounds a bit odd. Surely that can't be the plan. God's promised king is meant to be solving the problem of our sins, which lead to death. So if he's dead, how does that work? And if the story had ended there, we would be stuck wondering if God actually kept his promise. Sure, Jesus definitely did live the way God's king was meant to live. And he did die having never, ever sinned. So maybe that was enough to deal with our sins. But how would we know? God had made a really big promise, so we want some evidence that he's actually kept it. Well, the good news is, the story doesn't end there, because Jesus didn't stay dead. Jesus didn't stay dead. We heard earlier in a passage about how Jesus' friends, first Mary Magdalene, then two of his disciples, went to the tomb where he had been buried. And when they got there, they found something really strange. The huge stone blocking the tomb had been moved away. And when the disciples went inside, the cloths Jesus had been wrapped in were there, but Jesus wasn't. So this was amazing. 
The disciples hadn't moved Jesus' body. The Romans and the religious leaders who had killed Jesus, they hadn't moved the body. And Jesus definitely had been dead. But now he'd gone. So there was only one possible explanation. Jesus wasn't dead anymore. He must have come back to life. So this is the evidence we wanted. This is the proof that God has kept his promise. Jesus had looked like God's promised king, but when he died, he looked like maybe he wasn't. But now his tomb is empty, which shows that Jesus really is God's promised king. So let's do an action for that to help us remember, because that's a big point we're going to learn today. We're going to do this for the empty tomb, representing the massive stone that had been blocking it, and this to remind us that Jesus is king. Let's put that together. The tomb is empty, so Jesus really is king. Again, let's do this together. The tomb is empty, so Jesus really is king. Death hadn't defeated Jesus. Jesus had defeated death. And that shows us that he really is God's promised king after all. He really is the serpent crusher. He really has dealt with our sin. Because he died, but then he defeated death, he came back to life. And we know that all that is true, because, again, the tomb is empty, so Jesus really is king. And we're going to see more about what it means for Jesus to be God's promised risen king in the rest of this term. We're going to see what it means to live with Jesus as our king. But for now, let's go back to what we read earlier. Because the disciples got to see more than just the empty tomb to prove that Jesus really was alive. They got to see Jesus himself. He appeared first to Mary and then to his disciples in person and showed them his wounds where he'd been put up on the cross. They could see that it was really him, that he really was alive. Imagine what they must have felt seeing him there. The Bible says they were overjoyed, and that's probably putting it mildly. Imagine how you'd feel seeing your best friend for the first time in months. Maybe you don't even have to imagine, maybe you know what that's like. Now multiply that by a hundred and you're probably closer to what the disciples were feeling. They'd just seen Jesus die, the one they'd followed for several years. They wanted what they believed was going to save them. But then he died. They must have felt completely hopeless. But now he's back and he's standing among them. Of course they were overjoyed. This was the most amazing news they could have got. Now, see, we don't get to see the empty tomb ourselves. Or have Jesus appear before us and show us his wounds. So maybe you're not yet convinced that Jesus really is king that God has actually kept his promise. After all, that's what Thomas, one of the disciples, thought. Even though all his friends were telling him, look, Jesus was right here, in this room, before all of us, he still wouldn't believe them. He said that unless he saw and touched Jesus himself, he would not believe. And so Jesus generously appeared again, letting Thomas see and touch him. And now Thomas believed, calling Jesus, my Lord and my God. He now understood what we've been learning today, that the tomb is empty, so Jesus really is king. And then Jesus said something to Thomas, that's great news for us. He told Thomas, because you have seen me, you have believed. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Thomas believed when he saw Jesus, and that's wonderful. But Jesus says that it's especially wonderful for those who didn't get to see him, but still believe that he's king. And that's us, that's you and me. We don't get to see the empty tomb or to see Jesus in person. We don't even get to speak to the people who did see them. So it might feel tough to believe. We don't get to see. So how do we believe? 
But that's not a problem, because the people who did see them made sure that we'd know what they'd seen. Through this, the Bible. Have they listened to the end of the passage we read again? Jesus performed many other signs in the presence of his disciples, which are not recorded in this book. But these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Messiah, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. John wrote his book in the Bible for everyone who would come after him. He wrote about all the amazing things that Jesus did, and how Jesus died and rose again. And he did that so that we could read them. And when we read them, we can also believe that the tomb is empty, so Jesus really is king. We can be those who have not seen and yet have believed. And that means that if we believe that Jesus is king, then we don't have to worry about death anymore. Because we deserved death for our sins. We deserve to be punished because we had rejected God. But Jesus has taken the punishment for us, our sins. And he's shown why he's done it, by rising to life again. So we can be sure that we will all have life too, if we believe in him. And so God's promises aren't nonsense, like what I said earlier about going to the moon. God really can keep his promises. And he showed it by raising Jesus from the dead. He showed that Jesus was his king. It really is true that the tomb is empty and so Jesus is king. Let's pray. Father, thank you for what you've taught us today about Jesus. Thank you that he came as your chosen servant, as your promised king, and as a sacrifice to take the punishment for our sins. And thank you that uh, he rose to life again. Thank you that the tomb is empty. And so thank you that we can believe that he really is your promised king. Please help us to trust in him today. Amen. Oh, that makes sense now, doesn't it? So why is an empty tomb here? Yeah, because the tomb was empty so that we can believe that Jesus is the king. That is a really important thing for us to remember. Yes, I've got to remember that, but remember, it's, it's my birthday. And Happy birthday! Yes, it's my birthday, but you still haven't given me my present and I still don't believe you. Right. Do you want more evidence? One, one more bit of evidence. Okay. Look at that picture. <sighs> that, that is a picture of... That, that does look amazing. I do love those cars, but... What, what if you were just walking down the road and you just took a picture of that car? You'll have to trust. There's evidence. I mean, I've told you. The cameraman said it's there. I had the receipt. I've shown you the picture now. I just... Until I see it, I, I, just, I just won't believe you. I've got to well, see it. You just gotta wait a little bit longer. But okay. you know what? What we really need to do is remember this empty tomb. How are we gonna do that? CD. Craft. Yeah. Let's do it. That's what we usually do. Here's the CD. Let me get it. Let me get the reader again. There we go. Hello there. Welcome to Big Bible Adventure Craft. I'm Debs. So today we're going to make a stained glass cross um, like this one. Um, and what you need is some coloured paper uh, card. I've used black. You can use any colour. You need a cross template that you can print off the internet, um, it, or you can draw it. It needs a double, double lined round it. You need some sticky back paper, so it's one sided sticky paper with the stuff you use to cover cover books, that kind of thing. And some tissue paper, cut up into little squares, or you can cut them up. Some scissors and some brick stick. So to start with, what you need to do is cut out the template. So you need to cut round the outside and then round the inside, and that you should then end up with a 
cross that looks like this. So then stick it onto the card and then you can cut that out. Cut that out. So I found the best way to do this is to do half of it first, otherwise you end up with bits in it. So you just need to peel off some of the sticky back plastic, like that, and stick it down there. Make sure it's nice and flat. So once you've done that, you start sticking bits of tissue paper onto it. You don't what you want to do is do it inside that border. I'll show you in a sec. So what you want to do is stick it all the way around inside there so that when you turn it round the border shows up on there. So you can do that all over that, do some nice colours and then when you finish doing that top bit, pull the paper down and then do the bottom bit. Then when you've finished it all, so you've got all the tissue paper covering the inside of the cross, what you can then do is cut, cut across the sticky back paper and just fold that in. So just fold that over so that it holds the back in a little bit better. So when you've done that and cut all the way around, it should then look a little bit like this. And then you can stick it on the window and the light will shine through it. So enjoy. Have fun. Bye. Oh, Pete, that was an amazing craft. I did love that craft. I think this time I'm going to do it. Are you going to make it? Yeah. And yeah, boys and girls, you should make it as well, shouldn't they? They should. And if they do, where are they going to send it so we can show them? Yeah, what's that? Yeah, Big Bible Adventure at Enfieldtown.church. Boys and girls, if you have any questions, where should they send them? Same place, Big Bible Adventure at Enfieldtown.church. Pete? Got any questions? You know, I've got one question because you know how I still don't believe that you've got me the present. Well, what can you do so, so I do believe? So I do actually believe you've got it for me. You mean you want some real evidence? I want some real evidence. The evidence I gave you, telling you, having a witness tell you, showing yeah. you a receipt, showing you a picture, wasn't enough. It's not enough. You want to see it? I've got to see it. All right. Now's the time. Let's go We're see it. Yes. This way. It's this way. It's this way. Where is it? Where is it? It's over here. It's over here. It's over here. Look. Oh. That's exactly what I wanted. Look at it. It's, it's got a horn and everything. And I can I can sit on it and I can ride it. Oh. This is perfect. Isn't it amazing? It's so good. And you didn't believe me, did you? I didn't believe you, but now I see it. Yeah. I believe you, but that's, that's a bit like Thomas in the story, isn't it? Because he didn't believe him until he saw, but we can't see the empty tomb and we can't talk to people who are there. And so 
We, we, we do have something though, don't we? We do. We, we've got the Bible. Yes! And, and the Bible is God's word and, and that tells us that Jesus really was risen from the dead, that the tomb was empty and, and people saw it and say, we can believe just from that. So I should have believed you, shouldn't I, from the evidence that you showed me? You should have. But now you can. You can trust what's in the Bible. You can trust and that I was going to get you a car, that I was going to get you a present. And we can trust that Jesus, what was it? That the tomb is empty. See? So we can believe, believe that Jesus, Jesus really is the, the king. king. Yes. You know, that is really good news. That is such good news. You know, I think it's such good news that the people back there, just those 12 disciples, more people needed to know about it. Yeah, but I wonder, do you think we're going to hear more about that next week? Yeah, I think more people need to hear about the good news and we're going to learn more about that next week. Brilliant. I cannot wait. Excellent. See you next time, boys and girls. See ya. Bye. Let's go. He's the King of Kings. He's the Lord of Lords. He can heal the sick. He can calm the storm. He's the Son of God, He can save us from sin, and He calls us to follow Him. Jesus met a man covered in disease, knew he needed to be clean. Jesus just touched him, the disease was gone. Only God could do that. Who is this man? He's the King of Kings, He's the Lord of Lords, He can heal the sick. He can calm the storm, he's the son of God, he can save us from sin, and he calls us to follow him. Jesus and his friends caught in a storm, looking like they're gonna drown. Jesus yelled, quiet, and the storm was calm. Only God could do that. Who is this man? He's the king of kings, he's the lord of lords. He can heal the sick, He can calm the storm He's the Son of God, He can save us from sin And He calls us to follow Him Yes,